Hello, welcome to the latest episode of Through the Pages. I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed this book. If you do, be sure to hit the little subscribe, maybe throw a little like in there. A comment would be, oh, that'd be so nice. Um, today we're going into LSD's psychotherapy with Stanislav Graf. So I get this cover in here a little bit more. Always love a good cover. So this book came out in 1980, and I believe it's had two re or, yeah, new editions come out. Um, I think it's like 94 and 2001, maybe. Um, but, yeah, Introduction by Albert Hoffman and Forward by Andrew Weil. So, a lot of, lot of big names on this one. And I, I probably took more notes on this book than I have in any in a very long time, too, which I is always a good sign for me. I don't really take much notes on uh, fiction, so you'll notice my last review, Bad Monkey, probably much more concise than, than this. Um, so LSD psychotherapy fascinates me because I think so much of what we see right now is in psilocybin and MDMA because they're not as powerful or, or not they don't last as long. It's a little bit easier to kind of get your arms around, but there's something to be said for a substance that does go that many hours, you know? And so he, he sat with over 5,000 sessions of patients going through LSD. He explained kind of his like preferred method, both sort of the, the lead up to it, the procedure, the follow through. And it's a big experience. Um, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of people involved, honestly, or, or several you know more than just one person saying come on over and we'll we'll do therapy you know it's it's a lot to it and getting you know family members or significant others involved afterwards for a dinner and things like that and so i don't know how many of the 5000 were able to hold up to that standard but he he talked about some people having dozens of sessions and i think that's something that Outside, you know, like I think with ketamine therapy, we, we anticipate multiple, but it doesn't seem like that's sort of the, what's proposed with psilocybin therapy. And I think maybe that is just strictly like access, that it's not feasible to do it that often. But somehow he was just breaking through in that time. And it was really fascinating to hear sort of classical and maybe that's not even the right way to say it but just the the frame the the like categories people would fall into through their therapeutic process and so that it, it's he does mention in it that through 5,000 sessions there is no symptom or element of psycho uh, LSD psychotherapy that is consistent that it is so all over the place for everyone. Um, not to say that it's you don't know what to expect. You know, you kind of have an arc to anticipate, but you can't say like, oh, they're all gonna have like, I feel like I'm seeing tracers, or like, oh, I'm 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 going to childhood stuff. Like it's it, everyone will have different uh, actions or reactions to it, and there's some just fascinating stories of the sessions happening things that happened afterwards, problems solved, problems that they were trying to solve with it. Um, and just overall, I just think it speaks to the breadth of the capability that LSD has in therapeutic sessions. It also speaks to the importance of using this substance mindfully and not just saying like, oh, this is a substance that can be good for people, I'm going to consume it. That's, that's not going to be therapeutic necessarily. It might be fun, you know, especially if you're at, you know, concert whatnot or, or with friends but uh yeah I, I most of my psychedelic use all started in that manner and just kind of recreational and then has transitioned now towards a more therapeutic approach um what kind of surprised me in the book was the the dosages so he referenced everywhere from 50 micrograms to 150 or uh, 1,500, I'm sorry. And so that's equivalent to basically like 15, 12, 15 doses, you know, given that they're like 100 to 120 micrograms per dose. And it's hard for me to imagine that being a experience that you can 
really define as like therapeutic, but I also like he he referenced some people that he was like he, he would administer it and just had almost no effect. And so I don't know if that's a combination of how if he was having so many sessions, knowing that LSD tolerance like builds up super fast. Um, but that kind of blew my mind, along with a lot of other things in this book. But yeah, he. I don't know if it. I think it most of it was administered just orally because there was a reference in it where he said like um like intravenously or intramuscular didn't have a great advantage um even though like notoriously Aldous Huxley did that on his deathbed but I think it's pretty much LSD as we know it obvious caveat to it is like pure LSD not just like street acid is like what he would say and that's it's a very good point um but yeah I I would like to see obviously all psychedelics be, become more open to use in psychedelic or in, in therapy sessions, but I think LSD is kind of a little snubbed right now in the scheme of things, but obviously like as we make, I say we, I'm not doing it, the, the like maps and people are making progress on it, it seems like you have to go with something that has a natural element to it or like with MDMA, I guess it's been used before and but I, I don't know it seems like LSD is not one that's being utilized and I think sometimes kind of counter to the like microdose movement is the longevity of that session at allows for more healing potentially and so um, I'm I'm fascinated by it. I've, I've had a lot more experience with LSD than mushrooms and that's I think I'm, I'm just partial to it in that way but it was uh, the the book itself to try to talk about the book a little bit more than the subject uh i liked the language of it in the sense that it was very like clinical but also felt kind of dated so it it, it doesn't feel like it's like a part of this like third wave of psychedelics here but also feels like i mean through the record keeping and just the the notes that would take it like it feels like very astute and so i think that's something where a lot of like literature around psychedelics in therapeutic or medical uses right now, you're either in the field and have been in it or you're reporting on it. And in this case, Dr. Groff was in it. And so it, it's a very kind of like formal read on it. Um, I will say it doesn't, there's areas where it doesn't like flow super well. Like it, I didn't read it incredibly fast. It, it was, there were some areas that really did some areas that really didn't I will say the any stories of like therapy sessions that all, all like went through like really smoothly but there was some like breaking down the subcategories of different types of approaches to like perinatal elements of the therapy session and things where it got a little bit in, in the the weeds and some of it I you know it almost feels like some of the language maybe it, there's new that it's it's not used anymore. I just I don't know. There's a lot of words where I just like I don't I don't hear anyone referencing these or or anything. So like I you know there there was a lot of terminology in it that I wonder if it was like almost his like proprietary terminology or if this is truly like if you went into like a therapy session day you'd go, oh okay you see you frame it that way as well. But I think also you get some of his philosophy in there and it does seem to have a lot to do with like birth birth and rebirth but kind of getting to your original like birth your or your like birth trauma your like your process of entering the world and how that affected you which is not something I'd ever really considered and I wonder how much of that is more like his philosophy versus like a consistent theme as he was saying you know there was no really consistent element to the psychedelic experience or the LSD experience across 5,000 patients but I think if you have that philosophy that it's a big deal, you can kind of impose that a little bit, but it does sound like he, like a lot of people say as, as being like the sitter, you don't like instigate conversation or try to drum things up. You're just there. And then what they say, you're, you're, you're there. And mostly just so they know like, Hey, I can keep processing this. There's a, a level headed human sitting here. It can't get that out of bounds. And so safety and comfort obviously being super important to allow for breakthroughs like he he really he kind of, he simultaneously spoke to how much the sitter is doing and how little the sitter is doing and I think that that duality is is remarkable there are some stories of 
patients being on the cusp of breakthroughs and sitters having to kind of deal with a lot and know that like your job is to allow for those breakthroughs, maintain, if they're not doing anything to harm you, as weird as it might get, as uncomfortable, like you gotta let them process all this and finish it and, and come out the other side. And so had some stories of some sort of like s mental like breakthroughs for the the sitter really and that it was kind of fascinating to hear and I, I, I would imagine that it would be a life-changing work to be a part of just even once let alone hundreds or thousands of times because I don't imagine he like you have to have had it he, he acknowledged having a team so like with that many sessions the amount of time it takes also the the years within it was conducted so like to have been a part of that team and just like I can't imagine some of the stories are, are like I'll just never forget them honestly like there there's so so many like powerful stories in this book the last two like some of the last pages of the book are two stories back to back that are just otherworldly um and he he is not one to embellish or try to like I he's not writing this for for kicks like it's to show the power of LSD and he does that incredibly well in this book so if you are wanting to learn more about not necessarily what psychedelics do to make them therapeutic but how those sessions can go um, or the structure of them or where our present wave of psychedelic therapy is coming from LSD psychotherapy Stanislav Grof he is one of the dons in the industry um, do read this book